Excited to be here today, lots of great discussion. Um, excited to bring into the fold artificial intelligence and how I believe it with blockchain will revolutionize the investment management landscape. And I think more broadly financial services, but uh, that is the title for today. So uh, bear with me, I'm just gonna click through a couple slides just to make up for some time. And I don't think you guys need a lot of this background. I just wanted to provide a bit more context into where AI started and how, you know, how we got to today with the technology. So just quickly on machine learning. So the, uh, the definition really is the ability to, uh, through experiences, to have the computer system um, be able to become much more um, astute to delivering the types of tasks and functions that we expected to. So it's through experiences that you get to a point where it, it, it establishes a level of intelligence that it can do the types of actions and tasks that you expect it. So getting into just sort of types of, of uh, learning algorithms, so unsupervised machine learning, the idea is that you're not dealing with data sets that are defined or labeled, you're dealing with data sets that are unstructured traditionally, and what it's doing is it's taking those uh, data inputs, and so a great example is an e-commerce application, and so you'd have users going through the application, purchasing products, looking at different products, evaluating things, breaking them down, and, and that interaction in itself is actually allowing the system to become much more familiar with that type of user's interactions. And so therefore they can derive insights as to the type of products and services that that user would like. And so they are able to decipher that information through that experience. So getting into deep learning, and that's where we get into another realm of machine learning. Um, and so it allows users to basically train an AI to predict the outcome of situations. And so what we're dealing with here is more neural networks and the ability to take different forms of data, uh, structured, unstructured data, uh, sound, as well as images, and be able to construct a view of what is expected. So in this case, the idea that you can have images of different types of cats and uh, tigers, et cetera, sounds, all different languages as well when we're dealing with structured and unstructured data, and have the system be able to, to tell you that this, based on a sound or an image, is a cat and of some kind. So essentially the idea is bringing all of those inputs together to be able to provide that type of responsiveness. And so ultimately the goal is to mimic essentially how the human brain works um, and especially the, the, the part of the brain referred to as the neocortex where we do all of our thinking and analysis. So now we're getting into blockchain and a little bit of background. I like using these diagrams thanks to William McGuire who published the book The Business of Blockchain. I find that book for all the business users out there to be quite effective in understanding and distilling what the blockchain can do for different industries. Um, the focus here is of course financial services but you'll realize that it can be expanded across several industries. So blockchain in a nutshell is a combustion of three fields, software engineering, game theory and cryptography. And so I won't spend too much time going into each one of them, but essentially the focus I wanna create is on software engineering. So the aspect here is that the blockchain in itself is really a platform. It's a tool to be able to use to develop applications on. And of course, there are other aspects to it. Um, bringing up this next image here, I think will distill what I would like to convey as a message today so that people realize, especially in financial services, that we can go ahead and do trials and rapid application development, developing prototypes to prove some of the use cases that blockchain can satisfy. So here we have a diagram that identifies four types of applications that blockchain can um, basically um, be applied to. And you have here internet networks, more of a public network and public, let's say, internet where you have private networks below. And so the hybrid, you've got blockchain applications that can sit right on the web and on the blockchain directly, and then you can have some that sit directly on the blockchain. So basically the, the, the combination of those gets us to four types at the core. And I think that's the biggest thing right now is that when we look at the different use cases that I'll be talking about, we'll realize that there is the ability to take the inherent capabilities of the blockchain, the security, the cryptography, um, the you know, transparency, the intelligence of the trusted nature of how people transact, and either use every aspect of that or distill components of it and, and present it in a different way using the applications that we intend to build on it. 
So Bitcoin, obviously quick uh, history on the progression of it, started as really a digital, uh, an experiment with a digital currency, um, thanks to Satoshi Nakamoto. And what we have now since seen is in 2013, the evolution of blockchain 2.0, which is essentially the Ethereum platform and others that have been developed where there was this realization that it wasn't just about the cryptocurrency, but it's really about the technology that underlies it that is the most powerful aspect of what we have seen today. And then getting into smart contracts, as you all are very familiar, and getting over to proof of stake where it becomes a little bit more interesting. So currently the process today is proof of, um, proof of ownership. Um, and so the idea is that, sorry, proof of work. And so the idea is that it's really based on the computing power that miners would have to be able to mine currency on the blockchain and to be able to be given um, the opportunity to mine a block. Now the criteria is changing to proof of stake, um, and the idea is that it's really not only based on the algorithm and, and uh, you know, a little bit of the randomness that comes out of the algorithm, but also the amount of cryptocurrency that you're holding. So if you're mining Ether, and the amount of Ether that you hold in your digital wallet is a lot more than the other miner, you'll be given that opportunity to mine that block, um, and a higher probability of mining that block. And then we get into scaling, which I think we've all talked a lot about today. Um, but the idea here is that as work is being done through the Ethereum community, as an example, um, to help with scaling the blockchain, we will have an opportunity to see greater throughput through the blockchain. So higher volumes of transactions being processed in parallel to be able to support the use cases that are quite prevalent to the financial services industry. And so I think once this is overcome, you're gonna see endless opportunities for its application. And now we'll get into some of the examples of functions that I think we, um, we will see the use of both blockchain and AI. So I'll start with algorithmic training, trading. So the use of complex AI systems to make extremely fast trading decisions. So that seems like a logical application of AI to something that traditionally has been done by computer programs, less intelligent, and then also by um, you know, human intervention. And so the idea that we can process these transactions in the, in the thousands or millions uh, per day. Machine learning and deep learning are playing an increasingly important role in calibrating trading decisions in real time. So that's the other aspect. When we talk about real time, it's going to hit a whole new level of what we traditionally know real time to be. Sentiments, news, and analysis. I think that's another area where the stock market moves, as you guys know, in response to a myriad of human perceptions and related factors. And so there is really an opportunity here for us to take a culmination of all data sources that are available today, and, and data, as you know, is becoming so much more abundant uh, than it's ever been. And so with all that data, we're able to have intelligent uh, insight into where sentiments are around a certain stock, around a certain company, around a product, a technology. And so I think that will really open our eyes to where we can get to with that type of analysis. Financial advice. That's always an interesting one, and obviously we've talked a lot about robo-advisors in this space and the role that they play. I think we're probably less shocked with the, uh, with the idea that you know, a website uh, and a web-based application could be where we go for financial advice. Um, and I think that with the advent of AI and, and uh, you know, deep learning in particular, um, I think it's beyond machine learning, that we get to a point where we can interact with a solution that will give us that timely, relevant, context-specific advice that, you know what, our advisors probably don't want to do anymore. They want to start having different conversations with us and really move up that value chain uh, rather than being focused on the type of things that now machines can do for us. And so I'll leave off with the last one, back office processing, um, and happy to talk with any of you after this. Um, but the idea there is that I think we all know that in the investment management industry, the back office is one that I think needs a complete overhaul. Um, there's a lot of cost, there's a lot of risk, and there's a lot of redundancy and duplication. And so here is a prime area where we can get rid of aspects of functions like reconciliation, um, the securities cage, um, quality control checks on transaction processing, you know, the idea that there's not enough transparency even within the interfunctions of, you know, the back office. Now you have blockchain allowing for that. You also have the blockchain enabling greater transparency with the outside parties, like the regulators and other uh, participants that you're doing business with. So I think there's massive opportunities there for the financial services industry and the investment management industry in particular to be able to seize the moment and grab some of that uh, benefit.
And then I think point solutions, just really quickly, um, hopefully I'm okay for time, I'm just looking okay. Uh, point solutions, so the idea that, you know, we have these needs for KYC, anti-money laundering, um, there's certain regulatory requirements and frameworks by country that make things, I think, not as portable, make solutions not as portable, and I know that very well, having spent 16 years in this industry working with companies that provide these mission-critical solutions. And so I think the blockchain should be interpreted in a way where we can develop point solutions, applications that address these needs while making us a lot more interconnected at the base. And I think if we can trade freely, openly, still with the security and the regulations um, you know, being met, I think that there's great potential in having these point solutions so that we can have much more portable uh, applications of this technology. And then finally, want to talk about a few companies that are making head, headway in um, the industry, and I think that the Funds DLT deserves recognition for what they have done recently. Uh, Fund Square, it's a it's a joint, well, it's a, a partnership, I should say, between Fund Square, which is a um, market infrastructure provider. Um, they basically provide the network for the Luxembourg uh, marketplace and also for other uh, distributors outside of Luxembourg. Um, and with Intec, which is a technology, I believe, uh, services company, and then KPMG. So they just recently, last year, did a prototype um, proving that they could run mutual funds through the blockchain. And uh, they have taken a very interesting approach and one that I think you guys should read more about. Happy to talk to you about it later. Uh, Quorum, it actually runs off of the Quorum platform. And Quorum, as uh, some of you might know, was developed by JP Morgan. And really, I think it is um, done what I think the financial industry needs to have when it comes to a blockchain platform. So it allows higher throughput, higher volume of transactions, and it allows for permissioning at the lowest level, like right down to the transaction level, and I think aspects of the transaction. So it's really appeasing, I think, a lot of the concerns and worries about using blockchain technology and making it much more applicable for the financial services industry. And then consensus, um, you know, Joe Lubin, who's the founder there, um, um, their team has been doing, I think, great work, especially in the financial services area, working on a number of projects to try to push the idea of where blockchain can be applied. One of their initiatives I know well, just because I've been working with the team, um, which is the reference data initiative, and they've been looking at taking all of the data that we know and, uh, and love in the investment management industry about all the investment products and putting it on the blockchain so that there's greater transparency, collaboration, and flow of information, which I think that is an area that, it, that is about time to, to have changed. Um, and then getting into uh, this vertical here, companies that are basically um, using the blockchain to change the way we invest, crowdsource, and fund companies. And so co-found it, um, very interesting in the sense that they have basically created a solution where companies that are looking for seed funding to even early uh, stage you know, startups that are have a bit of revenue in the door and need funding. And so here's a platform for companies to connect with angel investors, uh, VCs, private equity, et cetera. And I think it even gets down to the end investor. Um, so something to look out for. And then the final category here is the AI space. And so I'm gonna give a shout out to the Flybits, Integrate.ai, uh, Realtor.ai, and Singularity.net, all companies that are making great progress in the AI space and are doing some, uh, I think, pretty brilliant things. They might argue that it's not um, where they would like it to be, but great, great things that I think are gonna provide much more context-specific services that can be applied to the financial services industry. So when I think about the model of a robo-advisor and getting that context-specific advice, that those are the companies that I think are going to be able to provide that um, and allow us to get to that point. Um, and then singularity.net, I think, is unique because they're using the blockchain to create a marketplace for the exchange of AI um, technology. So I think you'll see a number of really interesting things coming out of them. Um, and I think that's it, I'll end with this slide. <laughs>